podium. I didn't even think about bringing. I even had to move it out of the way to get the whiteboard. <laughs> Just, no. That's funny. Yeah. All right. So, um, you know, this morning, especially I guess just being at Gregory, got to not do that too much, right? Being at Gregoryville, thought, um, I remember Kim a couple weeks ago just asking at the beginning a certain question. And I just thought, boy, that'd be fitting if we uh, kind of started it out today. And Kim, actually, for the sake of the camera, if you wouldn't mind, I'm just I'm going to ask you to ask your question again. But if you, we're, we're using the mic that's actually on the camera. Okay. Maybe if you even just stood where Mike is. If you want to come on up, feel free to. But if you want to just stand where Mike is. <laughs> I'll stand here. Yeah. No, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. So really, I just asked a few weeks ago to expand on and talk a little bit more about time and chance and where, where it is in the Bible and then also kind of put that together with prayer and how also in the Bible it talks about pray without ceasing, give thanks, and so on mm -hmm. and so forth, but kind of combining those two together with, like, you know, human logic, you know, like okay. where our brains or yeah. my brain, like, can kind of explode when thinking about those two. Very good. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. And and I think we sum that up many times. You say, can we talk about time and chance? Would that be a fair statement? Yeah. And, and uh, you know, I remember Jerry asking that back when we were at uh, the coffee house. Um, so, yeah, no, time and chance. Um, and, of course, some other things, you know, and, and thanks for bringing other things into the question, uh, prayer. And um, I, I would even bring in predestination. You know, some people would take time and chance versus, you know, is that predestination? And where does that fit in? And there's certainly scriptures. Uh, that have to do with predestination as well. So let's try to wrap all that up into, well, we'll see how long this goes, um, maybe perhaps part of a study here this morning. Uh, but time and chance, wow, so many ways you could go on that. I think of, it, it's something I use in business presentations a lot. I'll actually have on a PowerPoint a quote by Steve Jobs, of all people, it has a lot to do with the Bible study, doesn't it? But about the dots connecting, and he's standing in front of the uh, graduating class of Stanford University back in 2006. And he said, of course, looking back, it's easy to see how the dots connect, but when you're back here, looking forward, it's like, you know, how's this ever going to happen? You know, time and chance and, and just, I mean, how are we ever going to get there? And so, when you can look backwards 10 years and see how all the dots connect, and that's why you just have to have faith in something that the dots will connect. And of course, now the question becomes, faith in what? And those of us sitting in, you know, this room, you know, we know to have faith in the Lord God Almighty, to have faith in uh, what He teaches us um, in this book, and that's that just is where our faith resides. And just a great way to kick this off. Also, anyway, let me start back. Steve Jobs given his address to, you know, they had him as the commencement speaker in 2006 for Stanford University. And he just said, you know, looking backwards, it's easy to see how the dots connected in my life. But, you know, when you're just coming out of school, looking forward, it's like, how in the world is this all going to come together? And, and you just have to have faith that they will. Of course, our faith is in the Lord God Almighty. Our faith is in what we're taught in the King James Bible. And again, looking back, and, and I know our discussions a lot between the two of us, it's just amazing the older you get, and probably the better way to say that is the more experiences that you have in life, you just go, wow, you know, that's amazing. You know, when something happens once or twice or three, when I say something, Things come together once. Dots connect a second time, a third time, a fourth, a fifth. Each time thereafter, it's like, holy smokes. You know, it, it, it is like 
things are happening being orchestrated the way they have, the way they should be, while at the same time, they're all time and chance. They were all by chance. But what's orchestrating the chances in our life? And I, I think even being here at the Gregory's and just thinking about how they came unto the knowledge of the truth part, I think they were both saved prior to this, if I recall properly, but coming to the knowledge of the truth. There's a, you know, Jerry Lockhart's teaching a Bible study right down the road here. And for the camera, we're kind of out in the country here. It's a beautiful location in lots of acreage. But their house burned down. I mean, they were lucky to get out alive, literally. And, you know, you go time and chance. Wow, terrible thing to happen. Well, through that, Stephen and Carla coming down. Did you know them well prior to that? No, not really. Didn't even really know, you know, their neighbors, you know, neighbors out in the country. So didn't know them well, but because of the house burning down, they come down and, oh, by the way, we have a Bible study in our home. They come over and, you know, now there's been an integral part, you know, of this Bible study. And here we are meeting here in their home today, like we do whenever there's a fifth um, Sunday in a month. And we have a potluck here and it's great. So that being part of that chance that ends up working unto something good. And, and so that just be another part. So Ecclesiastes chapter 9, this, this verse is just a great way to, to launch this discussion as well. Ecclesiastes, so Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes. And chapter 9, verse 11, I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise, nor yet riches to men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fishes that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it uh, falleth suddenly upon them. But verse 11 there even has time and chance in it. And Jamie was sharing while we were taking a, a, minute, a, a small break there that um, in her son's uh, funeral, they used that verse right there, time and chance. And so, you know, Jamie, I, I appreciate you bringing that up there, and it does fit right into the discussion here. Uh, time and chance, another example that always makes me think is Brother Moore, uh, you know, used to travel the world every single week, <laughs> not the world literally, but he had Bible studies, you know, he had a motorhome, and you know, for 30 years from out of Pensacola, Florida, he had the same route pretty much, you know, so every Monday night he's in this town and then they go further north Tuesday night, they're in Selma and Wednesday night they're up in Birmingham and, you know, they had their route, their circuit, a Bible study each time. Usually they went in their motor home, but not always. But one time as they're going up the interstate just south of Montgomery, Alabama, the tire blows and, and Brother Moore is asleep in the back, Mrs. Moore was actually driving this, they had their, I think their van on this one, wasn't it? Do you recall? It wasn't the motorhome. And it doesn't really matter. The point is, um, he's asleep in the back, lying down, and the tire blows, and through this accident, he's thrown from the vehicle. And of course, on an interstate at that rate of speed, I mean, you're lucky to even live through that. And he actually was in a coma. But through that whole episode, of a, of a, you know, you think of the chance of that tire blowing right there. And while he's in the hospital, one of the nurses gets saved. I mean, you know, Brother Moore, once he comes to, back to it, everybody's going to hear the gospel preached from him. And, he sa and I've heard him tell the story so many times. And he says, no, I'm not telling you that God made that tire blow but he can use the circumstances about that for the good of the body of Christ. Here's a, another nurse that heard the gospel of Christ and coming, you know, and, and got saved. Asked the Lord to save her based on Brother Moore 
being in that hospital, and of course he would not have been in that hospital had not a tire blown back there on the interstate. Um, so time and chance um, at that. If we go to Romans chapter 8, <coughs> It's kind of interesting how the different parts of this passage will come together. So in Romans chapter 8, you know, I'll just say my favorite verse in the Bible is verse 28, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Okay, so all things work together for good. I hear different people preach different things about that. My personal opinion is that it says all things. And I think that means all things. To further define that, good, bad, and indifferent. All things work together for good to them that love God. Because I, I still look back on our lives, and I still say some of our best, not some of, probably all of our, the majority of our best lessons were from some things we would consider bad things to have to go through. And we, we learn more through those. Now, I didn't really want to talk about 28. It's past 28. But it's interesting to me that these next few verses follow, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Verse 29, For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Whoa, we're talking about time and chance and things just happening, and now all of a sudden we just switch to predestination. And these things being, he did predestinate these things. Well, the first part said, for whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Verse 30, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And that's such a great line, you know, phrase right there. If God be for us, you know, who can be against us? I mean, keep that one in your back pocket for those times when there's just no way out of something. I mean, oh my gosh, the world is coming to an end right now. There is no way I'm getting out of this one. If God be for you, who can be against you? Of course, the verse is, if God be for us, who can be against us? But just, just keep that one to play. There's your trump card. Matter of fact, if you come down to the bottom, uh, And have to get these eyes checked, George. If we come down to the bottom, uh, verse 37. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature that shall be able to separate us from the love of God shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now take that back to the end of verse 31. If God be for us, who can be against us? Okay, so, like I say, just keep that as a card to play in your back pocket when you just, Lord, what am I going to do? How am I, you know, where do I go from here? If God be for us, who can be against us? All right. So other things, you know, along the lines uh, of time and chance. Yeah, I'm going to even I'm even going to give a personal example without details. I always know when I go to that Kim's probably go. Oh no. I mean, let me. I want to just the last four years, or you know, three or four years. I, I'm blown away how the dots connected and the people that we met through these and the and 
and, and just how that's affected our lives. I mean, three, three and a half years ago, see, it would have been Christmas of 2014 was a really tough Christmas getting the kids home. I mean, financially. January 2015, just, I, I remember a guy hired me two days. I got to dig ditches for this guy. And I think, why is he even hiring me? He's an electrician. He was putting in a, a lighting thing in one of these fancy um, uh, subdivisions. And he had the contract to put that in. And he would always, it's when we had the water store, if you remember when we were having Bible studies there. And he always hired um, people that English was not their first language that could do ten times the work that I could do in a daily um, on a daily basis, but he knew that I was looking for a way. If I can make a hundred bucks that day, great, you know, because that's that's just where we were. And so he he hired me two days, but that's where we were financially. And then a couple, just two or three months later, is when got to work for AC Green. I thought, wow, this is pretty cool, you know, Los Angeles Laker AC Green, and a business partner who ended up and everything was a leading with God. You know, be careful, have your antennas raise big time. Uh, I'll never forget backing up 15 years ago, getting in trouble one time with the banker uh, that we met with there, and we'd gotten to be good friends with him. And he says, you know, only twice in my life has somebody pulled one over on me, and both of them were great men of God, you know. And, you know, one was a Baptist evangelist, well-known Baptist evangelist. And... Um, uh, anyways, it, so just be careful when people lead with, you know, if they've got to use the Lord's name to sell their business, be cautious. I'll definitely say that. Uh, so, coming back to the story, but through, I remember we were in Denver, so it was August of 2015, and, and we were the title sponsors of this Christian concert. I mean, 50,000 people came to this thing. It was quite a, an event, and they held it outdoors. There's a big drag strip there and outside of Denver, Colorado, on the west side, right at the base of Red Rocks, and beautiful location. And I had realized by that point that AC's getting taken. This is great having on tape. Uh, having it on, <laughs> getting taken by his business partner, this great man of God, you know. And, and um, I'm having to tell AC that night, hey, you're getting conned here. You know, the business is not a con, but as soon as he wrote him a nice big fat seven-figure check, it was all about getting the business to fail, so AC would just go away quietly, and that's what the whole strategy was. And it's like, oh man, you know, how did I get caught up in one of these again? Fortunately, it's not our money at risk, but you know, it's our time we've got invested here. But through that, there were two people that I got to meet. One up here in uh, Colleen, Texas is where he lives. Um, and then the other guy in Denver. But the role they have played in like three businesses since then, all three of them, you know, they've been part of. And it's, so I'm just saying time and chance and, and the chance things. And, and once again, thinking, oh man, it, it seemed like a bad thing we're going through. But both of those men, matter of fact, the one is a... Uh, we, we went to his ordination even as a Baptist minister up in Colleen. So we're getting to share the gospel with these both of these men. Um, matter of fact, the other one, the couple from Denver, they have been to our Bible study. That was Mark and Katie that were there one time, and if you remember, from Denver. So people that want to follow God the way they would word it, but again, their church, I mean, they've got an Israeli flag up there even, up at the podium, and, you know, on one side, American flag on one side, and a Christian flag and an Israeli flag. Like, they've got to align with the Jews. And, and so we get opportunities to preach the gospel to people. Um, keep your hand there in Romans 8 and go to Ephesians 6. All right, and notice some of the things that Paul prayed for that sound like time and chance, but it's... It's as much when the chance occurs that I will make the opportunity of the time, of the chance that occurs. Like in Ephesians 6, you know, of course, 
we go here a lot to talk about, and we're not going to read verses 10 through 18 about the whole armor of God. We will start in verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. I'm going to use the word today, interpreted. I usually don't like doing that because the King James Bible says it exactly the way it wants to be said, the way the Lord God Almighty wanted it to be said. When I say interpreted, meaning bringing it into our discussion today, time and chance, Paul is saying, pray for me so that when the door of utterance is given me, okay, when the chance arises, I just, quote, happen to be in this room today and somebody says, hey, Apostle Paul, would you share the gospel or ask a question? Pray for me that I may, bless you, Thank you. that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. And I think about each of us. How many times are we in a situation with people by chance where a door of utterance is given, do we speak, do we open our mouth and speak boldly and make known the mystery of the gospel? <laughs> And so obviously for the camera, well, you, like, like Brother Moore has said so many times, if you have a Bible study and if people that are listening in the room or listening to a tape do not know how to get saved based on that study, you've just wasted an hour of their time as well as an hour of your own time. In other words, all that, may, all that matters is preaching the gospel. How that, the Lord Jesus Christ, back here on that cross 2,000 years ago, when He's hanging there, He shed His blood to pay the penalty for our sins. He was buried and raised again the third day for our justification and all of that being according to the Scriptures. And of course, 1, Timothy, or 1 Corinthians chapter 2 tells us that that is a mystery that when He died, that He would die for our sins. That's the mystery of the Gospel. That He would die was not a mystery. It was prophesied throughout the Old Testament. He was prophesied, it was prophesied 430 some years prior to the day He was crucified on that cross, the exact day He'd be crucified. So that was no mystery. It was, it was prophesied to the day for hundreds of years. You think about that. The mystery of the gospel is that he would die for our sins. And as it says, as a matter of fact, go ahead and turn there to 1 Corinthians 2. Let's just complete that thought. So now that you have a hand in Romans 8 and Ephesians 6, but go, you, you can let go of Ephesians 6. But 1 Corinthians chapter 2, of course, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4 is where you find the gospel of Christ. Paul says that's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the mystery of the gospel is right here in verse 7. And he says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they not known that he was, had they known that he was dying for our sins, they wouldn't have crucified him. Satan thought he had won, and he lost. That was the checkmate. You know, he just said, anyway, that was the checkmate. And, you know, had Satan known that he was going to die for our sins, they wouldn't have put him on that tree. They would not have crucified him, according to what we just read there. Okay? So that's the mystery of the gospel. And that's, it is, just believe on what the Lord Jesus Christ did back here. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He died for your sins, was buried, and raised again for your justification. It is, trust, you know, believe in that, and trust in that and that alone. Don't worry, Janie, I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at the camera. 
it, so you don't need to take this personally. Okay? But that's how we're saved today. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Nothing you can do to gain your salvation, and praise God, nothing we can do to lose our salvation in this dispensation in which we live, the dispensation of the grace of God. Ephesians chapter 3 tells us all about that. Okay? So back to time and chance now. And, Scott, you know, I mean, not Scott. Steve, I yeah. just saw something. Uh, when you read, for all good things work for good, that at the funeral, his best friend's father got saved. Mm -hmm. And in December, he died of cancer. Oh, wow. So that's my all good things work for good. With Steve's death, his best friend's father got saved. Wow. First time and chance. I yeah, and how's that for time? Just, Did you hear? Were you able to hear back there? How's that for time and chance? I just remembered that. Wow. Wow. So you know, things to us as humans appear as chance. I mean, you, you think about any accident. Uh, you know, how do we have this discussion? I mean, not in, you know. I know I use a lot of these stories over and over again, but you know, I, I can't help but think of Barry Hampton. I mean, time and chance, my goodness. You know, your nine-year-old son needs a pair of jeans on a Sunday afternoon after Bible study that morning. Sure, let, let's go. And, and, ah, it starts raining. And boy, down in, in the south, when you get a rainfall, it's like living in Houston. I mean, when it rains in the afternoons in the summer, it rains, you know, an inch in two minutes. You know, it just, it comes down. Hey, let's wait till after dinner. Okay, great. So they have dinner together. It's a Sunday afternoon in Montgomery, Alabama. You do This is what you do as a family, is you go together to, to Walmart, you all pile in the vehicle. There's not a whole lot to do in <laughs> Once again, we're on tape, right? Uh, maybe you're right, we didn't need <laughs> so, so anyway, they get in the van, and they had an elderly lady uh, living with them. They, they even called her grandma. And uh, so she and Jonathan sit in the very back, and, and Brenda, Barry's, so uh, Barry's teenage daughter is 17 at the time, says, hey, can I drive Dad? You know, she's learning how to drive to get her license. Sure, Jamie, you go ahead and drive. So she's driving. Barry sits in the passenger seat next to her. Brenda, Barry's wife, sits behind Jamie. Uh, I forget who that would have put in. Maybe nobody's in that seat, but... Grandma and John, it must be Grandma in that seat, and then Jonathan's in the back, in the van. Now they're pulling out of their neighborhood. They back, put it in reverse, back out. Don't even have it and drive yet. Don't even have it and drive in front of their home. Here come two teenage boys dr drag racing through this neighborhood at like 100 miles an hour. I think one might have only been 90 miles when they actually hit. And yes, bam, hits that van. Two people killed in the van. Barry's nine-year-old son, the only child they had together, and uh, Grandma. Both died in this accident. You talk about time and chance. Barry then, 30 days later, and we ended up going to uh, this Bible conference. Not, I don't even know if we knew Barry was going to be there, but he ends up being there. This is when Brother Moore had at Pensacola, Florida. Literally 30 days after this, and this, go, this is coming to time and chance, and that's not, the, that's not the only chance part of this. I mean, that... Anyway, so on our way to the Bible conference, now you think about time and chance on this, because our girls at the time, oh, were probably, you know, 13, 11 six, seven, somewhere around that, give or take a year. And especially the older two get into critical times, you know, ages, you know, start talking about salvation. And so we're driving from North Carolina down to Pensacola. How many people have ever seen that you got held up by a bike race today? How many people while you're driving somewhere have ever been held up by one of these life flight helicopters coming into an accident and so and you were part of the traffic you had to stop and just sit there anybody ever been part of that 
Okay, so two people raising their hand. Okay, more than once? And you're, you're frowning like no way. Right? Would you believe not once on, on the way from North Carolina to Pensacola, not once, not twice, three different times we come to a complete stop while the life light comes into these accidents. I mean, come on, three times. I don't think we've ever had it since. And so this would be back in 2001. We've never had it since. We had it three times in one trip. I don't, I don't know if we'd ever had it before that. And so each time, I mean, this is getting uncanny. And we're talking about Barry and, and his son, Jonathan. And well, we get to, to Pensacola and we go up to get our keys, you know, to get to our room. And who's at the front desk but Jamie, who was driving, you know, the van. And it's like, what do you say? to a 17-year-old girl. And, the, but where I'm really going with this, Barry preaching. First of all, I couldn't believe he was there. Then he preaches. And he preached a message that we have got to get back on, remind me, we've got, that's why we're doing this time and chance, we've got to get on our site. We had it on the site at Montgomery. Is Barry preaching, and he called it the cost of the father. And the gist of his message was, you know, I've been a preacher for 20 years. This is Barry, I'm quoting. I've been a preacher for 20 years and I've never understood or never viewed this, thought of this being the gospel of Christ from the view of God the Father. And, and, and he gave a gospel presentation but from a totally different perspective that only going through time and chance situation like that could any man do that and that was you know from God the father's eyes of watching his son and now you think about the gospel of Christ and think about it go ahead and turn to second Corinthians chapter 5 and think about this passage God the father looking down on his son and we just talked about the mystery of the gospel that he had to die for our sins and really thinking about this now so 2 Corinthians 5 19, 20 and 21 2 Corinthians 5, 19 to wit that God was in Christ reconciled that God was in Christ so think about that first of all this is while he's hanging on that cross now the six hours he's on that cross. This is what's going on. That God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now here's the verse, 21. While he's on that cross. For he, God the Father, hath made him, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And Barry took off on that right there and just preach a message that I am committing to you. We will, Kim and I will go back and find that message and get it on butnow.info. I can't believe in all these years we haven't thought about getting it on there. So Barry made cassette tapes and, and made them by the hundreds. And when we go to a restaurant, and just give them out to everybody. Of course, back when cassette tapes were things you could listen to. <laughs> Some of you on the tape are going, what's a cassette tape? The, the point is, the words in that message, it was time and chance that allowed Barry. And I heard him, so that was 2001. And of course, Barry ends up, you know, if you had advanced from there, uh, September 30th of 2010, Barry preaches a Wednesday night service, goes to sleep. They're going to leave the next day to go to Jamie's house. For her birthday, Barry never wakes up the next morning at 51 years young, dies in his sleep. Wow. 
And because of that is when I started teaching and preaching uh, from we were living in Denver and I would, you know, try fly to Montgomery for the next, you know, year taking over his church. Um, chance that that happened. It was, it, boy, you talk about rude awakenings in life, that, that was a major dot in our lives. Parts of it good, some parts didn't seem so good. And, but they're all time and chance. And it's all how all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. It just seems horrible at the time. What in the world could be good about a nine-year-old boy being drugged 200 yards underneath a car is the rest of that story. And, you know, Barry said, I didn't even, I, Steve, I couldn't even recognize my son except for the red sneakers on his feet. I mean, you think about that. Horrific. The stories he's told about that, and I've heard him tell them, is, is phenomenal to me. Here's the part two. How the, the two boys drag racing. Now it took, I don't know the exact time frame. Barry, en or not, yeah, Barry ends up spending the night in jail. Back up the rest of the story here. While they're having dinner there, let's have a margarita with dinner. 17 year old, underage, right? Hey, Dad, what, you know, I've never had a taste. What does a margarita taste like? Here, have a sip. One sip. That's all. Because they, you know, when there's a death involved, they do blood tests on drivers. Zero percent alcohol in their blood. But they separate everybody. Hey, did you have a drink? Well, I, I did have a drink, you know, one sip of a margarita at lunch. And you're 17? Father, you're in jail. You're a preacher. You can imagine the headlines in the papers. I don't know why I went to that part of it. Oh, because Barry spent a night in prison. His son... You know, his, here's his wife with a broken back in the hospital and he's got to spend the night in prison because he let his 17-year-old have a drink. I mean, this just goes on and on, doesn't it? How did the, the, the two boys... Oh, anyway, so I guess one of the boys got inebriated at a bar a few nights later and that's how they end up catching the two. They, they didn't know who it was. They, the, the police. So they then catch them. They got them in jail. Barry goes to the jail and preaches the gospel of Christ to the two of them. Now you think about that. You know, the, the, the two men, boys, I, I think one was 19, one was 20. Actually, one may have been underage, the other was late 19 or 20. And that had to do with the punishments and all that stuff later on. But, but anyway, Barry goes and preaches the gospel of Christ to these two young men. Wow. And he says, that's what allowed me to finally forgive the two of them. Because you think about the verses. Because God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Know, forgive one another as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Okay, we've read that many times, right? And, and Barry said, that's what was healing for me. And the one boy very well may have gotten saved. The other one just says, yeah, right, you know, and just blew it all off. But the one boy may have gotten saved. Now, how's that for time and chance? How's that for time and chance? Okay, don't know for sure. But, um, you know, Barry said, I have every reason to believe that there's a, a good possibility that that one boy did get saved. Wow, praise the Lord for that. Now, the people in Pensacola, the number of people there... That I'm going to say may have gotten I'm going to, I use that term all the time now because I don't know for sure when people get saved and when they don't but that may have gotten saved that heard Barry preach the cost of the Father phenomenal phenomenal so we are uh, Romans 8 29 we're predestinated according to his foreknowledge so does God cause the timing, you know, the rainstorm to cause them to back out at that time so that the son will get killed, so that Barry will go to a jail? I don't think so. But can the Lord use that so that somebody, one of the two boys that even was driving one of the cars, can hear the gospel of Christ preached because of a father that wants to come in? And maybe he did it for his own sake. 
so that he could make it through. But, you know, by me going in and preaching to them, he says, Steve, I, I was furious. I, you know, when I got there, I wanted to wring the boy's neck. Literally. He says, you know, the cops stayed there with me because, you know, what do you think a father of a nine-year-old boy that got drugged 200 yards might do, right? And he said, but man, the words just came and preaching the gospel, and especially when the one boy just jumped on it. And he said, the tears flowing down his eyes. You would come and preach this to me? And that's when Barry said, I went to that. You know, I, I have to forgive you because even as God hath forgiven me, for Christ's sake, I forgive you. The situations that we're in, the doors of utterance that we get from that, I guess that's, that's the point here that, that I'm trying to you know, get across and, and just... You know, again, the, the things that we've experienced and watched others, you know, use those that, that seem terrible. You know, Janie Sharon, you know, the funeral of her son. Janie was in that car with her son when he was killed. You think about that? A mother, you know, and, and father in there, and you just leave it at that. You take things that none of us should ever have to go through. Who was the, the pastor um, that had to preach? Oh, Gilbert so uh, Gilbert, pastor right outside of Montgomery, Grace Preacher, Gilbert, not Solomon, Gilbert. Gilbert didn't come to Yes. Uh, um, and uh, time and chance for crying out loud. How could I forget? Sorry, I get wound up sometimes in case you never noticed. Time and chance. Gilbert Shellen. Yeah. Gilbert Shellen, thank you very much. Lives in still preaches in, in Prattville, Alabama. Listen to this. Time and chance. Wow, i got goosebumps going already. Haven't even started the story. And you've heard it before, but some of you. And this is probably four years ago. I go to a luncheon. Somebody asked me to cut for business. It's a women's luncheon. And a gal that's distributing the, the water machines, you know, that you all have in your... Uh, she says, hey, I, I'm going to have a booth. Would you come and help me? Sure. So I'm at this women's luncheon. They meet once a month here in Austin. And at the end, a gal gets, they ask this gal to talk about the new thing that she's going to be in. And everybody knew this gal. I mean, I think she's like mid-20s. And but yet everybody knew her. Turns out she's the voice of the Longhorns on pregame stuff, you know, for the Texas Longhorns. Um, and, and so that's where everybody knew her, and she had a news, a spot on the news. I, you know, we never watched any of that, so I didn't know who she was. She gets up to talk about this new um, nonprofit agency that they're about to have this big thing this weekend coming up. And the, the thing that's going to happen this weekend up in um, just north of here, west, west of here, out 29, what's the big town west Marble. of here? Marble Falls. No, before Marble Falls. With Burnett. Burnett. In Burnett. In a couple hundred acres, it's a place for a nonprofit for uh, servicemen that commit suicide. Because basically, every hour we have a, a, a returning vet that commits suicide, and I had no idea it was like that. And she even tells this story about a good friend of hers that the day before. Committed suicide, has two children up in Colleen, Texas. Just got back from like his third tour in Iraq. So this is four years ago. Just got back from his third tour, two little kids, gets home, commits suicide the night before. And so this weekend is going to be the opening thing. I'm, I'm getting kind of caught up about this, so I, I go up and talk to her afterwards. You know, tell me, you know, where is this thing? Get the address. And so. Oh, and this is the same weekend as um, Navarre Beach Conference. And we're already scheduled to preach there. Now, by chance, I happen to be there at this business luncheon. By chance, it happened to be the same weekend as Navarre Beach, where I'm already on slate to be one of the teachers there. So I have to call. So, so I made, and she's going to let me give a quick, no, not yet. So I just felt led to go there. I'm going to say it that way. Felt led to go there to this grand opening of, of the um, nonprofit for vets. I mean, it just really hit me. 
So I called Byron that night, Byron Wiggins, Pensacola, took over Brother Moore's church. You know, Byron, I'm, I'm not going to be able to make it this weekend. Um, I may have a chance to, you know, witness or something down here at this, you know, it, it's, you know, for vets, a, a vet die, uh, commit suicide every hour. He said, oh man, did you hear what happened to Gilbert's son? I said, no. Gilbert Sullivan, Gilbert Shelley. Shellen's son was the exact same person, Gilbert Shellen, in Prattville, Alabama, Grace Preacher, in all these small little groups of 20 and 30 people, Grace Preacher there, it was his son in Colleen, Texas, that just got back from a tour and, and committed suicide that was the friend of this gal talking by chance where I happened to be at the lunch. I mean, come on. You can't make this stuff up. So I called her. I said, I don't, what, Ashley. Ashley? Mm -hmm. I said, Ashley, you're not going to believe this. Your friend is the son of my friend that I'm supposed to preach with this weekend. Can you get me ten, you know, five minutes? Ten, oh, yeah, you got ten minutes. Well, I get there. It turns out this one whole church is there with a thousand people. Um, big church in Burnett. Burn it. Um, in in burn it. Um, anyway, one of these mega churches, and they all come there for this grand opening of this thing. So I got to preach in front of, and, and, their, and just their church had a thousand people sitting there, and give this story and preach the gospel of Christ to them. And it's like, praise the Lord for opportunities like that, but why did we get that opportunity? Why did I have that chance at Thor of Utterance because of something terrible? So jump ahead the next year. Or maybe it was even the last time we were at, um, I think the next year Gilbert was not there, but then two years after, after this, we're back at preaching at the Navarre Beach. I don't remember it's when you were there or not, but we're at Navarre Beach at the conference again. And so I share that story with the group, and Gilbert and his wife are there, <coughs> and she loses it, of course, as any mother and, and father would, but, and they just said, Wow, we never heard that. To think that our sons, and, and I'm sure you can relate to this, that our sons, I'm um, suicide, could lead to those thousands of people being able to hear the gospel of Christ preached. They just said, praise the Lord, we knew there had to be a reason. Now, I don't know that, you know, again, fill in those blanks where you want, but that's connecting. All things work together for a good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. Amen. Amen is right. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. But time and chance, so they, they do, they go together and, and predestinated according to His foreknowledge. You know, He knew, God the Father knows exactly what day, what chance, what situation is going to put each and every person in the place where they get saved. You know, I know part of my testimony personally at, at 24 years of age. It's 83, so yeah, 24. You know, I had just gotten laid off. Um, and and we and it had probably been about eight or nine weeks. And I remember I had one credit card at the time that probably had a $1,500 limit on it. And we had just gotten down to the last dollar off of that $1,500 credit card. And you think, oh man, I'm at the bottom of the barrel here. You know, 1500 and that's the bottom of the barrel, right? Um, and you get to low places in life that'll, that open you up more to listen to the Gospel of Christ. You know, the night before, Kim's mother got saved. And I'm sitting right next to her, even... Helping her, you know, hey, here's the gospel, and yeah, you just believe that. You're saying, and I was a lost believer. I was a lost guy. But I think that my point of bringing that up is chance and time Four and the knowledge. situations that we're in. I was just saying foreknowledge. Yeah, and the foreknowledge, he knows, and he, so maybe he puts other people in situations to be there so that time and chance comes into play as in Ecclesiastes 9-11. Yes. I don't believe for one second that 
God the Father causes a fire in this house to occur so that that will drive you to end up hearing the knowledge of the truth. You know, First Timothy, you know, two, four, and five. You know, God our Savior, who would have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. That is the will of God the Father. He would, He wants all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy two, four, verses four and five. He uses the chances around. His foreknowledge, He knows when those will happen. But once again, I don't believe that there's any Scripture that tells us He causes the circumstances to come about so that somebody will hear the Gospel, will hear the mystery of the Gospel, and get saved. That they will come into the knowledge of the truth. But He uses those situations and by his foreknowledge he knows that that's when that will occur and so Kim I'm taking a lot I thought I was only going to take 10 minutes actually I had something totally prepared but I also I do want to go to one passage and I think you even made reference to it without making but go to Philippians because it does fit into this as well it, having a discussion we just had we've got to add these in here Philippians uh, chapter 4. Verse 8. So in Philippians chapter 4, and I want to start in verse 4. And Paul says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, Rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You know, that's why we say parents always pray for your kids. Hus you know, mothers always pray for your kids. Husbands always pray for your wives. Okay? We're commanded to do that first of all. But in doing so, we don't know what chance events might occur in our kids' lives. Time and chance. You know, I, I think we shared with you last Sunday. You know, our our middle daughter just got engaged a week ago yesterday. Chance. Kim has said for years, I've always known while we've lived in each place we've ever lived, and we've lived <laughs> in a lot of places, but I could never figure out North Carolina. Why did, you know, why, why did the Lord bring us there? Interesting. Time and chance. Mm -hmm. Sophie's post, I just saw it yesterday or day before, when she got engaged last Sunday, the way she worded it, the way she announced to her friends and on Facebook, mm -hmm. she said, my first boyfriend just became my last. No. I thought, wow, I'm going to lose it now. <laughs> <Your daughter. laughs> How cool that was. And it was. It was her first boy, seventh grade, her first kiss, her first boyfriend. And, and you know, they were even in one city at the same time. Two or three times they almost got together on the East Coast. Two or three times in New York City. They almost got together, but they each had somebody else there, so they never did get together. Then they both end up moving to Los Angeles, you know, 3,000 miles away. And they would even been there a year or two before they, you know, hook up the first time or get how, whatever you say <laughs> the right way. And if I'm saying the wrong way, forgive me. How about lunch? Got together for lunch? <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, how's that for time and chance? And you know, they get together and, and hardly been apart since. And now they're engaged and, and, and you know, the young man, we, we very much like him. Anyway, the, just time and chance. The dots connect. We have to have faith in the chance events that we go through and the BS events that we find ourselves in some are momentarily but really bad 
Some may last months and months and some may be a year or two. While we're going through them, it's the worst thing on earth and there's no way... Yep, that person may have gone through it and gotten out of it. That person may have gone through it and gotten out of it. But there's no way... There's no way in hell I can get through this. No, there is no way in hell, but there is a way in God the Father and through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and, through, and it starts with being saved that you can get through that. Romans chapter 5. Well, that, that verse became true for me, the peace of God. I was blessed. Yes. With you know, J.C. O'Hare says that every person, when they first get saved, should read this a hundred times through these 11 verses. But these are so fitting for time and chance. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, and I'm going to add without works, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you can use that one verse alone right there. There's a peace of God. When you're going through stuff, and chance that you say is not a good thing, that's enough right there. You are justified by faith without works. Therefore, have peace with God. But there's a few verses after this. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. You think about that. You glory in tribulations also. Amen. The more of them you go through, the easier it is to glory in those tribulations. There's more to the verse. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. And patience, experience. And experience, hope. And hope maketh not ashamed. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. So you think about those things right there. If you even go backwards with those. Okay? Hope maketh not ashamed. Okay, we don't need to be ashamed of anything because we can always have hope. But how do we get hope? Well, we get hope, we can have hope to know that it will get good because of the experiences we've gone through. I'm going backwards here in this list, right? Well, how do we get those experiences? Because of patience. And where do we get the patience? It's worketh out of tribulations. Tribulations that we go through. And don't let anybody try to make that the great tribulation. No, that's tribulations we go through. Okay? No, so verse 3 again. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh, pa work, worketh patience. Hey, every tribulation we go through is working patience in us. And patience, experience. Now we can have those experiences to know, oh, wait a minute. I now have an experience that I can go back on. I used to go back on Jerry Lockhart's experiences and Brother Moore's experiences that would give us hope. But then we got to experience some of those firsthand. And the joy that we got out of those tribulations that allowed us to have hope to know, man, just have faith in God the Father. He'll get you there. And praise the Lord. Until you go through those, you, you don't know what that is. And, and before you go through them, you know that you don't know that you want to, or you know that you don't want to experience those. But after you do, you say, praise God, I got to experience that. And you know what? We did get through it okay. How about that? Mm -hmm. And that's what allows us to then be an experience for somebody else that's going through one of those. And, and you don't even know a lot of times when you're that experience that others are looking at you or, or using your experience as a way to give them hope to get through that. Those doors of utterance. Okay, those doors of utterance. So back to the passage, verse 6. Okay, for when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. 
But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified and just claim that word, underline that word, highlight that word now in verse 9 and again in verse 11 when we get there. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by His life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. And I emphasize those words now, because in this whole book, which is a history book, from the beginning of the world to the end of the world, Genesis through Revelation covers this entire time period. Look at this book as a history book, because it is. The Old Testament brings us up to the four Gospels, which tell us about the birth of Christ, the life of Christ, the death of Christ, the burial, the resurrection of Christ. Then comes, Paul, then comes the book of Acts and transitions from this church to the church which is the body of Christ and to the dispensation of the grace of God. And then after that comes through Hebrews through Revelation, which is the doctrine for the seven-year period of great tribulation, the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to earth to set up His thousand-year reign on earth as King, sitting on that throne, along with the twelve uh, apostles coming back to sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel out there in the future. The point being, only in the dispensation of the grace of God does one now receive the justification and now receive the atonement in all time periods up until Paul and Paul's writings people had to hold out to the end it works were part of salvation in the dispensation of grace it is Ephesians 2 8 and 9 for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast when this dispensation ends with the rapture of the church, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall meet them in the clouds, so shall we ever be with the Lord in the air. Then begins a seven year period of great tribulation. We're out of here. We don't have to worry about it. Now it's all about works. They got to hold out to the end, to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ to earth to set up His thousand-year reign. Works are part of the program again. Works are part of the program all the way up until here. Works are part of the program everywhere after. Just like we read in, in Romans 5, verses 9 and verse 11, now we have the justification and now is our day of atonement. That's very different than what Peter preached in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 3. He, he told those people very distinctly, their Day of Atonement is right there. You cannot miss it in, in Acts 3, 19 through 21. Clear as can be, that is the event when the people that are part of the church that Peter preached to, that's when they receive their atonement. They have to hold out to the end. They can lose their salvation. And oh, by the way, if they lose it, they never have a second chance. You and I, on the other hand, in the dispensation of the grace of God, we're saved the moment we not just believe the words of the Gospel, but trust in what Christ did for us here. No matter what stuff we go through, what chance we find ourselves in, Christ died for your sins. He was buried and raised again for your justification. Amen. You just believe that and trust in that and that alone. Stop trying to be good enough. Just start trusting in what the Lord Jesus Christ did. By chance, maybe you stayed on this lesson all the way to the end to hear this discussion today that starts from a very a great question. All of us, all, every single, since I've been teaching here in Austin, Texas, five and a half years ago, I would say, and I'm not even looking for a vote, 100% of what I would call the best lessons I've ever taught started because of somebody asking a question at the beginning of class 
that just allows the Spirit to work through a man, but through His book, the King James Bible, to, as a door of utterance, to preach the Gospel of Christ, the mystery of the Gospel, and by chance you just happen to be here. Anyway, thanks for being here. And Gregory's thing, go ahead. You want to add? Uh, I wanted to uh, add something to Ms. Kimberly's question about our experience in that uh, foreknowledge and time and chance. Before we went and visited Jerry Lockhart preaching, days after our fire, the neighbors across the street invited us to a Bible study they were having at their house. And we went to that Bible study a couple, three times. Is that right, Jerry? A couple, three? Yeah. And uh, I can't speak for Jerry wholeheartedly on this, but for me it was, oh, more of the same. They were going through a book and a series of tapes. It was about yeah. Israel and all this. And, you know, it just, it was, it was an awkward experience. But time and chance, it's just interesting because we went through that to get to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that foreknowledge, it's just interesting that the foreknowledge was there but why did we go through three Bible studies talking about Israel before the door opened up for getting introduced to Jerry? You know what I mean? And also, Kim was in a four-year Baptist college learning theology, and she had cancer and had to come home. And ended up with that Bible study with Jerry. Because wow. she was at her house with the fire. Because she came home to live. Wow. she was going through a treatment, so... And you can go back even <laughs> further than that and start connecting the dots, but that foreknowledge piece, uh, we talked about the time and chance a lot today, but the foreknowledge piece, uh, it's just real interesting. You know, you can study throughout the Bible for a hundred years to walk and talk that, but uh, it was just ironic that we went to this Bible study across the street, super sweet people and all that, but in our mind's eyes, it was like, oh, we've been, been there, done that. And that's what we were trying to get away from, is this mm -hmm. theological teaching of uh, churchism, if you will. Yeah, religion. And, uh, yeah. and so we lost heart and interest in that, and very nice people to this day, friends with them and everything, literally right across from our driveway. But it opened the door for Jerry to go to what started out to be a women's Bible study. <laughs> Yeah, mm -hmm. and but uh, which led to going to the Monday night or Thursday night studies with Jerry Lockhart. So it's just wow. interesting. Very. Yeah. So food is here. Stephen, lots of. But Mike wants to add. Oh, first, sorry. It looks like. it just add one, Robert. Um, you know, uh, some of y'all can remember the story of Joseph. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. And then the one verse at the very end before Joseph dies, <coughs> he says, But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. Yes. To bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Think back of everything that happened to him, his brothers leaving him for dead. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I mean, no matter what he went through, you know, anyway, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. That's it. It is. And thank you for bringing that into the discussion here because that's, and usually with Romans 8 28, that's a great parallel passage and story to bring right in right there. If jo and by the way, Joseph is a type of Christ, I mean like over a hundred times yeah. when you do analogies. But Joseph, everything he went through, you think about chance. Yeah. You know, like, like Mike said, his brothers intentionally put him in a pit to leave him for dead. Mm -hmm. You know, they wanted to kill him, literally. Right. One brother says, let's just put him in a pit. And they take the coat, stain it with the blood of an animal to convince the father that he's dead. They want him gone. They're envious. It was all envy was the driver. Because of that, and because he get, and then he, he gets sold into slavery. And then from there, he's in prison. 
But because he's there by chance, there's the cook for the Pharaoh there. And by chance, you know, a dream, he interprets it. By chance, he ends up being the number two guy in, in all of Egypt. By chance. And he even gets thrown back in one time because he doesn't succumb to Pharaoh's wife trying to seduce him. Potiphar's wife. Right? Or Potiphar's wife, thank you. All right? So he's back in jail. Boy, that sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> but by chance, it's used for good. All things work together for good. You intended it for evil. God used it for good. Okay? And because he's there, he now gets the favor of, of Potiphar. And he gets to save up for seven years because of the Lord God talking to him. Or... or giving him the visions so that he can put away the food for seven years so that when the seven years of drought comes, all Israel can be saved from the drought coming on. How's that? And that's, you know, Mike, thank you for bringing that up. There. Well, throughout the Bible, everybody who was used was somebody who was coming out of the negative. Yes. You know, for lack of a better word, not just about everybody. I mean, Paul was wreaking havoc and he was pulled into the grace of God. Amen. Good stuff. Yeah, thank you, Lord. So when you think you're down there, the best is yet to come. The weak will be strong. Yeah, the best is yet to come. All right, thank you, Jerry. Any instructions you might have for us? Try for each. There's bowls, plates, forks, drinks, and lots of food.